Maybe it's true that with CGI and special effects, we've finally conquered the cinema of the impossible. From digital dinosaurs in 1993 to animated actors and everything in between, you could easily argue that images like these represent cinema that was previously unthinkable. Detail and visual spectacle of the kind that we'll probably never see with our own eyes. Cinema of the impossible. There's another kind of impossible film though. Watch what happens here in 1903. It's something amazing. We see shock, the reaction, and then finally, this. The camera is now inside the man's head, looking into the magnifying glass. It's showing us something impossible, not just the tiny, but also the internal. We see what the man sees. We're looking through his eyes. This is one of cinema's greatest tricks, showing us the world through another set of eyes. The point of view shot, for me, is much more spectacular than CGI and more audacious than any special effect. And with today's video games, virtual reality and GoPros, it's more important than ever to figure out where this kind of visual language comes from and what it means. Imagine seeing the world through the eyes of another. But the view from here is impossible. When I go to the movies, for two hours at least, I have an out-of-the-body experience. If the movie is working for me, to some degree, I am that person on the screen. I forget my social security number. I don't know where I parked the car. I am having vicariously an experience that happened to someone else. Roger Ebert thinks of cinema as an empathy machine. He's not wrong, nor alone. But why then is it so hard to show the world through another set of eyes? Early attempts at first-person perspective, films like The Lady in the Lake and Dark Passage were interesting failures, but failures nonetheless. The first-person shot, the subjective shot, far from being empathetic and effective, is actually disembodied and ghostly. When we look through the eyes of another in cinema, it's often fleeting and for effect. Glasses off. glasses on. The process of seeing paintings or seeing anything else is less spontaneous and natural than we tend to believe. Perspective makes the eye the center of the visible world. But the human eye can only be in one place at a time. It takes its visible world with it as it walks. Modern technology has to offer all in longer sequences, seeing the world from somebody else's eyes feels a bit strange, so we use it to show strange perspectives on the world. Cyborgs. Robocop. Robots. Ghosts. By itself, it's threatening. When we see the world through the eyes of another, we don't feel empathy, we feel horror. Killers. Monsters. But really, this is because this eye is not the human eye. It's the eye of the camera doubling for somebody else. I am an eye, a mechanical eye. I, the machine, show your world the way only I can see it. I free myself for today and forever from human immobility. I'm in constant movement. I approach and pull away from objects. I creep under them. I move alongside a running horse's mouth. I fall and rise with the falling and rising bodies. This is I, the machine, maneuvering in the chaotic movements, recording one movement after another in the most complex combinations. Hey, Aziz, what's there up? You are. One of the most important shifts in our visual language over the last decade or two has been the re-emergence of this kind of first-person perspective. Take a look at these slightly odd Vogue interviews. So, what's the biggest thing you've learned about the movie industry? Oh, there's so much waiting around. 
They seem to be in a single take, and they're first person chats with celebrities. This perspective, it's still a little strange, but it's part of our culture now. It's supposed to feel intimate and embodied like you're there, like it's real. What was the last song that you slow danced to? Uh... Part of this is technology, of course. Video games revived the first person shot and made it compelling again. GoPros and VR added to it and normalized it. Another magnifying glass for us to understand these impossible viewpoints. Because of course we're not seeing the world here through another's consciousness, but through the lens of a GoPro. Give us a framework and we'll accept first person perspective much more easily. We're happy to see the world through the eyes of a train. Or a plane or even a bullet. But somebody else's consciousness? That's where it becomes impossible, where the images become heavy and the vision becomes the camera's. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. The camera is present and every shot is constructed. We're looking through the lens, through the celluloid, through the projection of an image. That's why representing another person's perspective on the world will always be just out of reach for cinema. The view from here is impossible.